Uh, like a lot of students, I went. I knew I wanted to be an engineer. I didn't know which one. So uh, freshman engineering for everyone. Liked civil, uh, liked construction, building things, and knowing how they're built. So started that direction, but uh, I didn't. I knew also that I was drawn to history, political science. Had grown up in a political family, and I knew I wanted this to be part of my education and maybe part of my profession. And I met with Dr. Grace, who, uh, who to this day, uh, I look back through some things, wrote me great recommendation letters, all kinds of things. Just a big influence for me on Purdue's campus. And uh, he encouraged me to put together a program and uh, submit it to, with his help, submit it to the Faculty uh, Oversight Committee for review and approval. And I did just that. So I looked at this. I hadn't looked at it for years, maybe since I wrote it. But with other things, I had it in a file. And I said that I you know, wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to have my engineering degree. But the intersection between the profession of engineering and the professional profession of law was a critical one. And to have someone who was acquainted and trained in both professions and was able to talk with the engineers about their legal issues and talk with the lawyers about the engineering issues would be a unique program. And um, I didn't realize I had it so together uh, my second semester of my sophomore year because that is actually what I do today uh, in my law practice. Of course, I have my public life as well, uh, which uh, both professions, uh, I think, uh, inform. But my law practice is focused on construction, uh, both contracts and issues during construction, actual projects, um, environmental, which was my ultimate emphasis with my IDE degree, was environmental emphasis. And even after, while I was in law school, I worked for the uh, Indiana Department of Environmental Management as an air pollution control uh, engineer. So it all kind of came together to me and for me. And uh, it's, it's all due to IDE. When uh, I was in freshman engineering, as first year engineering was called back in those days, we received uh, in our class, I think it was called Engineering 179, all the engineering schools sent someone to tell us uh, what the various schools offered and why we should choose their school. And the best of those presentations was presented by the late Dr. Jim Barony. Dr. Barony gave a phenomenal presentation. He made industrial engineering seem really, really exciting. Now, I enjoyed studying industrial engineering at Purdue, but exciting is a bit of a stretch. But Dr. Barony made it seem exciting. If I were limited to something like mechanical, electrical, chemical, civil, or structural engineering, I wouldn't be an engineer today because none of those things fit for me. Industrial engineering came close, but when I got into it, I didn't really like it as much as I wanted because I wanted a little more broad uh, study experience than IE offered. There were a few electives, but basically it was a structured program. And IDE had just started in 1969. And I, so I'd heard from some classmates about it, and I walked over and talked to Dr. Grace and Joanne Lord about the program and thought about it. Didn't have to think very long because they were both effective salespeople for the program. And so I switched, uh, I think it was my first semester of junior year over into IDE. And the rest is history. I enjoyed every minute of it. I don't know if it enjoyed every minute of me, but I enjoyed every minute of being an IDE a student at Purdue and, and graduated in 1974. You didn't really develop relationships with faculty, long-term relationships. Now, Dr. Grace, obviously, is an exception to that. He was with me the whole way through. Uh, but there were only a few professors that I had for more than one semester. And a couple that stick out uh, for me are uh, Bob Jacko, and I'll tell a story about him in a second, in uh, civil engineering. At that time, he was focused m mainly on air pollution control, which was an interest of mine. Um, uh, Dr. Edsel, who I had for a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, environmental courses as well, was just actually was an expert witness for me in some cases as well now since deceased, a great man. Uh, and then in the College of Liberal Arts, uh, Professor John Tiford, who was an uh, outstanding professor, big shock of hair, big glasses, and you know, walked up and down the aisles, people, people, do you understand this? Very enthusiastic guy. And uh, I still occasionally, up until a few years ago when he retired, would have some of the interns here say, um, just so you know, there's a kind of a crazy professor up at Purdue who says he's responsible for your entire career. And it, I drill down on it, it's Professor Tiford. He made a big impact on me as well. And uh, Professor McLaughlin prepared me for law school with a couple of con law classes and more. But Dr. Jacko, 
uh, is the one that, that leaps to mind. And uh, we became friends, but I took my, it was a graduate level course, and it was my semester before applying, the semester that I was applying to law school. And uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't getting a great grade. I might have missed a couple of the lectures. And, and he knew this very well. So I, I came to him, I said, Dr. Jacko, I'm applying to law school. I think I had a B and wanted to get to an A. Might have been a C and I wanted to get to a B. I'm not gonna look. Uh, but I, I, really, I really need to do something to try to improve my grade here. He said, well, I've, I've got something that you can do. You can prepare a paper for me of literature research on clean coal technology. And I'm sure he had some project he was working on at the time and wanted some background information on it. And uh, so I stayed after finals for a week uh, during Christmas break and worked on this paper. And he doesn't know I've had 50, I mean, composition, I've advanced composition. I'm not your typical engineer. And I put this paper together, spent a lot of time on it, many hours, delivered it to him. He's there still too and waiting for my paper on, it's probably the day before Christmas at this point. And he says, I'm gonna review it. I'm gonna review it this afternoon. Give me your phone number, I'll call you. So I'm the only person in my fraternity house. The whole place is, is uh, completely vacated. Phone rings, of course there's no cell phones. So then I have to run and catch the phone on the eighth ring. And he says, uh, Brian, is this Brian? I said, yes it is. He says, well this is Dr. Jacko. And I said, oh, hi Dr. Jacko. And he says, you're getting an F in my course. And <laughs> Dr. Jacko, I." Why? He says, you did not write this paper. This has been plagiarized. And I said, Dr. Jacko, I researched and wrote every word of that paper. And he, he said, I, I don't believe it. I said, I still have my work papers. And fortunately, I had a big stack like this. I had not tossed them in the dumpster, which was picked up that day, and held them. And he said, you be over at my office in 15 minutes with your research papers. And I ultimately either got the A or the B, whichever it was. Uh, and we became friends. He knew I was going to law school, and we st stayed in contact after, uh, after graduation. And what really made me feel good was four, four years after graduating from Purdue, and I'm a lawyer, he calls me with a project, and he wanted me to review some contracts. And it, he's just more of an impact than, than you might, uh, might realize. In terms of professors that might stand out, I did have several. I can't uh, do anything but start with Dr. Richard Grace and the late Joanne Lord, who without those two, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair today. They did more for my education first and career second and life probably ahead of first than anybody else I'll name. But I will name three professors. Jim Barony taught, taught me uh, industrial engineering 230 it was, probability and stat one. He gave me a C, so I'm not necessarily pleased with that part. But he was a phenomenal instructor, and uh, he was very prominent in the reason that I'm an engineer today. The two professors I probably remember the most are Dr. Bob Lee, who was a civil engineering professor and taught math, freshman math. He is the best math teacher I ever had at any level. He took a complicated subject and made it very understandable for all of us. Hard to do when it's mathematics. And then Professor Ken Wark in the mechanical engineering program, he made thermodynamics exciting. Now, that's the, the word might be somewhat exciting, but the subject matter isn't. But the way Dr. Wark taught the class uh, really made it exciting and fun to learn that. And that was probably my favorite pure engineering class that I took at Purdue as a result. Many great professors, many great stories, many great memories, but those are the ones that stand out for me. I can think of many sports uh, mem uh, memories from those days. I had the pleasure of seeing Rick Mount play as a uh, my freshman year, his senior year. I saw Mike Phipps play. I saw Stanley Brown run, run three kickoffs back for touchdowns in one year. Um, I saw a number of great sports uh, activities and actually got to know a number of the uh, athletes because surprisingly enough, quite a few of them were in the engineering classes or uh, in industrial management classes that were part of my IDE uh, study program. So that was uh, interesting. Moving to Shreve Hall, uh, Shreve first opened in 1970 and I was one of the lucky ones uh, who got in. It was very difficult to get into Shreve Hall back then. My roommate and I both had good uh, grade point averages our freshman years, so that's how we uh, were chosen, I guess. It was, it was a great choice because many of my friends from that first floor at Shreve uh, became lifelong friends, and I still see them today. 
So that, that was a defining moment is meeting all those great people. Well, there's no doubt that, uh, that my uh, IDE degree uh, blazed my trail to law school and, and beyond, really, to my adult life. That ability to see the, that there's black and white and that there's shades of gray uh, perhaps in the same context, I think is a, I think it's a, it's kind of a unique approach. Well, blaze your own trail is an interesting term for someone who spent 43 years as a fire protection engineer. I spent most of my life trying to prevent people from blazing anything, but uh, IDE was actually a natural fit for that career. Fire protection engineering is a very multidisciplinary thing. We deal with civil engineers, structural engineers, chemical engineers, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, all types and uh, we have to uh, understand what they do quite well. So interdisciplinary is uh, just a perfect fit for that. I graduated in the 1974 recession. Most of you who are watching this tape have no idea what that means, but uh, the nation was coming out of the Vietnam War. Uh, things were quite difficult for us as a nation back then, and uh, we were in a very fierce recession. Banks were failing, jobs were hard to find, job interviews were hard to get when I was a senior at Purdue. So. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a few interviews, and one was with a company called Factory Mutual Engineering, who was uh, an insurance company that hired fire protection engineers. Well, I didn't know what that was until I went on my job interview, but it turned out to be, frankly, the only job offer that I got that fall, and so I accepted it gladly, and I've done it for 43 years. I've loved virtually every minute of it. It's a very interesting uh, profession. It's a noble profession because it saves lives and saves property. and uh, helps people. So those are all things I think that are good. Engineering does that in general, but I'm able to do it specifically day in and day out. So that's really how I got into fire protection. After law school, I was hired by one of the major law firms here in the, in the city and, um, and got some great training for a couple of years. And then I was asked by uh, the superintendent of public instruction, H. Dean Evans, uh, to, because of my, my father was deceased, but because of my father's history in the legislature, to serve on his staff and help him with legislative matters. So I took a sabbatical from law practice and did that for a year. Decided I wanted to run myself. Um, and of course had grown up really kind of in the state house visiting my dad, uh, who was there from the time I was five until um, he passed away when I was in law school. So it was kind of built in that, look, you, you have to find a way to give back. My Purdue graduate sisters, one was a teacher, multiply handicapped kids. and. One was a, a computer technologist for uh, the state here and, in an administrative role. So we were all expected to give back in some fashion. So when the opportunity uh, to run in 1986 occurred, I, I did it. And uh, I've served in the General Assembly now for 30 years. I don't put that one around a lot, but uh, I'm the longest serving Speaker of the House in our state's history with uh, beginning my uh, fifth two-year term uh, just here uh, in the last couple of months. Had some great experiences to, uh, to help change Indiana. Uh, probably the best eight years of my political life were uh, when the president of our university uh, and uh, then the governor, Mitch Daniels, and I collaborated, uh, both newly elected officials, to uh, change the course of the state of Indiana, and, and we did it. And uh, it, I'm thrilled about it. So that was kind of the course here. and. There are other opportunities have have come up, and I've I've passed. I enjoy what I'm doing here. I could impact lives. I can still practice law. I'm a very active law practice still, and uh, it's it's great. It's great to make a difference for people. Insurance is probably another thing that may not sound exciting, but it really proves to be very exciting. Every day is different. Every day gives me a new problem to solve. Uh, oftentimes, it's something I know nothing about, so I have to do some research and and dig into it nowadays with the internet. That's much easier than it was when I had to go to a library or look, look it up in a book. But So those things are all, maybe there was, there was no choice involved, but it's just how I wound up. And I, like I said, I've loved every minute of it. I, I'd come down to one of two, and, and one you may, may seem relatively small in comparison. I was one of the principal advocates here for school choice for low-income families. We have nearly 40,000 students whose families have been able to, have been low income or lower income and have been able to select a school that was right for their child for whatever reason because they're fast, they're slow, uh, they're, they have a disability, uh, they're exceptional, or they just wanted to be in a parochial or a private school setting. And 
I think that has a lasting uh, change. Uh, I will tell you that one of the things that I'm the proudest of and I can't take credit for it alone was back to uh, Mitch's and my first year in leadership roles here in the, in the state and our uh, determination and my announcement for the two years prior to that that we were going to turn Indiana around, make it the number one place to do business, locate, grow, transfer your business in the Midwest and in the top five of the country. And that sounded like a pipe dream to so many people. And list after list after list, whether it's Forbes or Tax Foundation or the Polina Foundation, Indiana has become the place to do business in the Midwest. And one of the few places that it's excellent to do business in the nation. I take great pride in that. And uh, certainly that credit has to be shared with a group, but there were just a few of us that had the vision that we could make that happen, and, uh, and, and we have, and that's exciting. That's a lasting legacy, hopefully. Starting tomorrow, I'm most proud of this award, and frankly, since uh, I received the letter in, you know, right before Christmas, this has just been the highlight of my uh, engineering life for sure, but prior to this, I'd have to say it was receiving the SFPE Fellow designation. Fellows in most engineering societies are the top one or two percent of the membership, and for me to get that uh, designation was quite an honor, but this one trumps that and then some. This is uh, the right buyer and the left buyer, if you want to use a, a euchre uh, term. This is the best that I've ever gotten, and I am extremely proud to receive it.